My wife Lisa is, was born in Ukraine and we have four children. The eldest two were born in Ukraine and since the, the Russian Federation's invasion of Ukraine's sovereign land, we've been trying to put together some first aid trauma kits to save lives for the Ukrainian people in the front line. Okay, Ollie, you ready to go? Hey guys, we just arrived in Warsaw. This is the second lot of the operation. There's going to be 42 bags over full of trauma and survival kits, as well as everything else, the eye protection, the ear protection, the, the chest decompression needles, uh, the safety pants, and um, it's great because it's going to be, we're going to make sure that we get it delivered in, in the, in the, force, in the next 24 hours to place into Ukraine. The hardest is to make a choice, to make a choice whom you can help and whom you cannot help. If you don't help someone with something, some supplies, it's human's life, what you didn't save. It could be life of soldier, or it could be life of the child, or woman, or or elderly. That is a choice when I can't help everyone and that is a guilt what I what I feel because I can't help everyone. I can't save everyone. So we've got about 400 uh, heavy trauma um, you know special forces sort of level uh, medical kits um, and they will be going to uh, you know about five or six groups on the front line. Um, we have about 100 uh, family emergency survival packs that we've, um, you know, uh, uh, fitted um, and uh, about 150 um, special forces uh, combat uniforms as well. So it's just after 4am um, on Monday morning and we're off. The convoy is off four cars and we're heading towards the border of the Ukraine, which will take about three and a half hours. It's pretty nerve wracking. We're going into an area that as recent as yesterday got four missiles hit Choi Kiev. Um, so that's not ideal. So we'll be on uh, high alert going over the border and especially heading into that town. Look, we're gonna insert um, into Poland. Um, we're gonna, we, we've bought a few vehicles, um, sort of four vehicles, uh, and we've retrofitted a couple of them. Um, we're gonna transport those across the border. Um, we've got some contacts we're meeting at a checkpoint. Um, we're gonna stay pretty much on the uh, western side of the Ukraine once we cross the border from Poland. It's now eight o'clock and I'm pretty sure we've made it to the um, the border. We're at the, um, we got, uh, we're in Ukraine and we're in the border checkpoint for Ukraine and we've been allowed to leave Poland with our four vehicles. We thought we had all the, all the documents done and then we found out that two of the vehicles are not for export, sorry for export only. So then we've, now the only alternative we've got is that we need, we'll then use those other two vehicles which is going to be our way of getting in and out in future times to come back and help out the people in Ukraine, then we're going to have to be, those two vehicles will go with the other two and they'll just become humanitarian uh, aid, so they'll be uh, repurposed as uh, ambulances, which is fantastic. Um, and we have, uh, you know, half a dozen or so groups coming to us. Um, and we have um, you know, exact requirements from those groups and we'll be supplying those with um, life-saving gear. We just saw the boys, uh, what Kate looks after. They are quite smart and they are lucky because, they are lucky because Kate looks after them and uh, she shares what do they do and where, bits of pieces and what they need and she shares what and where will go and what they need extras especially medication, but un unfortunately we cannot take it from Australia, but she will be looking 
to get it here and I gave her some cash from those ladies what I bought from Australia and she will be looking to buy some med medication for her boys. Every one of the uh, trauma kits can save at least a life. Um, you know, they, are, they have, you know, the world's best, um, you know, quick clot, they've got hemostatic granules, um, tourniquets, um, they have got gear in them to save life or loss of, li loss of limb. And that's what we've been told that the frontline soldiers are lacking. One IR, mm -hmm. one IR stick and one colour stick. Which colour? The logistics to get um, all of this trauma and this well needed life supp supplying stuff to Ukraine, it takes a, a lot of people. So we're very lucky that we've got a really good team around us. Going into a war conflict and an area where there is fighting, intense shelling and so much death and destruction, then we realise there's the element of risk involved. Look, it's a combat zone, um, as we're all aware. Um, so it has real and inherent perceived risk. Um, risk can be mitigated. Um, so we uh, uh, have planned this thoroughly, um, but you know we won't take undue risk um, and we'll be in and out of there um, as quick as we need to be. These sirens went off, so we, we grabbed some chairs and hung out with some ladies in the clothing shop and then we got the mail to go to a bunker in a local school. Oh yeah, we had to stay away from the windows. Anyway, now we're in a school and there's, it's hard to say how many people were in this bunker, but it's a pretty big bunker. And there's Craig and Al and there's uh, lots of people down here. And Helping people, um, you know, Ukraine's, I think globally, everyone's accepted that, you know, they're in a pretty horrible position. Um, and, you know, we've got an opportunity to help, um, targeted help, um, so we know that we are going to, you know, save life um, of both civilians and, and, and combat soldiers. The only way that we can make this such a, such a big mission to saving so many people's lives in Ukraine is from the the financial contribution from so many people and most of those people, nearly all of them were through the racing industry so I'm so, so proud and privileged to be a part of that. Ukraine is my mother. Even if I live in my mother's in-law place, Ukraine is my mother. What do you do to save your mother? <laughs> Thank you.